Hi, I'm Sherry. I want to welcome you to my studio today. Now these lines I added are now distracting. I wanted them to make the piece look fuzzy and now they're just distracting from the horizon line. So I'm going to scrape in some lines and come back with the phthalo green and then come back with the permanent green light. I don't want this to look like grass. I want this just to look like variations in the green. But once I added those lines up here, I really screwed it up, I think. So I'm just pushing. The pulling doesn't really remove any paint. Alright. Now, I don't want to get this mixed up, the little crumbs mixed up with the paint, because then I'll have globs. And while texture is important, un clumpy paint really never works good. <laughs> I'm going to go into um, the phthalo green. I need a little more wax. And it does have a little white, but I'm not real worried about that. It's a substantial difference between this green and that green, so I think we're good. I'm really bad about getting paint on the side of my uh, palette. <laughs> now I got all the paint off of this yesterday, but now I'm going to put it back on. Oh, look at that. That's Oh, that look that's what I'm looking for. Sorry, I keep putting the palette between the light and the art. Now, I want this less line looking up here, so I'm going to just finger paint. I may or may not have mentioned that my uh, husband is an architect and he can just draw so amazingly, but he of course doesn't consider himself an artist, though my god his buildings are gorgeous. Anyway, um, so because he's a visual person, I am able to bounce ideas off of him. So last night when he got home really late, because he has a project coming out tomorrow, um, I said, come in here and look at these and tell me what you think. And we discussed what I thought was wrong and what his impressions were. And this time they were actually in agreement. <laughs> So, but it's nice to have someone with an eye that you can bounce ideas off. Don't want a straight line. So, 
So if you have someone you bounce ideas off of, who is it? Are they an artist as well? Is it an online group of friends? An in-person group of friends? It's interesting because my artsy-fartsy friends here don't really go for the kind of art I do. They, uh, a few of them do mixed media, but they're not into the kind of art I do. But I have an online group of friends that I help me when I'm stuck. Anyway, who do you bounce ideas off of? Because everything works better if you have someone to bounce ideas off of. Even as a tax accountant, I found some things were just easier if I could say to another accountant, you know, this doesn't seem quite right. So who do you bounce ideas off of? Who do you go to when, what do I, what do I name this? Sometimes I'll put that on my Facebook page and I have an aunt that <laughs> she comes up with the most punny names for art. I can always count on her to give me a good pun. And my husband can always be counted on to give me something incredibly goofy. So between the two of them, I have the silly names wrapped up. So, I think this is a little better than what I had the other day. Hi, I'm back again with the last day of this landscape. And I have decided that I want to pull out my pan pastels and darken it around the edge. When you have a piece that's not going to be framed, a lot of times it just looks like it's falling off the edge. So I'm going to add a little pan pastel. I think I'm going to have to start taping my work down. It keeps moving as I'm working. I was watching a video the other day of a lady whose camera was clearly mounted to her desk and every time she rubbed or talked the camera just bounced and bounced. It's like, ah! Oh, that's too much. So, a lot of times, uh, a painting just looks like it's falling off the edge. I, uh, you buy pan pastels in these cute little containers, and quite frankly, they last forever. They are so much more concentrated than um, a pastel stick, though I keep those on hand too. But you can take them out and put them in these holders. I'll link to some in the description below. Because the wax, the wax is dry, but it is still tacky at this stage so it's great for something like this and now I want to put some more of this um, dark magenta shade in here probably should have put it down before the brown and that brown is raw umber And as usual, 
Your fingers are your fa are your best tool. Here I'm just kissing the edge because I don't want to tint the sky completely. Gonna go back and add a little bit. Let me see what color blue that is. Yeah, I'm gonna go back in and add a wee bit of blue to the sky, just ever so lightly. And again, fingers. I'm um, I like the cloudy look that the sky has. Lovely going to add a bit, I don't know, do I want to add some in here? I'm going to add a little bit of blue on the horizon line just to give it that grayed out look we discussed, or I mentioned at least the other day, I guess you and I weren't talking. <laughs> And a tiny bit of green. I have a brighter green, but yeah, that's hmm, maybe. If I, if you get these dirty, you just wipe them off with a clean one. Also, if these get dirty, you just, if these get dirty, you just wipe them like that. Eventually they wear out. But I leave them on a really long time. Okay. Because this is dry, the um, all the grooves from the other day are still here. I think I'm going to count this one done. What I'll probably do is let this dry and then come back and put a clear coat of clear wax on it. Thanks for watching my video. Please leave it any questions or comments you might have and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you'll subscribe. Thanks again. Bye.